All right, hello and welcome everybody. I'm excited to be standing next to this guy right here. This is the Cyrusher XF650. It's a 2021 model and it's a 48 volt, 1000 watt e-bike, 26 by four on the tires. You know, I love my fat tire e-bikes. And this bike is in a, uh, I'd say a growing category of e-bikes. There's, there's becoming a lot available out there in that, I'd say $1,300 to $1,800 price range. You got quite a selection. And I wanted to do this video today to, to kind of show you what you get for your money on the Cyrusher bike. So we're gonna take a closer look at this bike front to back, all the components. Um, I'll give you some information that I've found as I rode it and uh, just some basic information so you can know if you wanna consider this bike if you're looking to buy an e-bike. So before we get started, there are two things that I need to tell you right up front. Number one is that this bike is here courtesy of Cyrusher. I did not purchase this bike. They sent this bike out to me so I could have a chance to ride it, give my user experience, do review, comparison, put some video information out there for you. So folks like you watching this can know if it's a bike you want to consider if you want to make a purchase. So if you don't know much about Cyrusher, they've been in business for about six years now. They have a wide selection of bikes on their website. Everything from uh, bikes just like this to motorcycle inspired bikes to foldable e-bikes. So uh, qu quite a selection there. I'll put a link to their website in the description. Uh, just know it's just a link. I am not sponsored by them or paid by them and don't receive any commission from them. So uh, you can always just Google them and find them that way if you want. That works too. Now the next thing I want to tell you is that I am not a professional. I am not a professional cyclist or e-bike mechanic or e-bike technician. Uh, I know a little bit more than the average person, I guess, but for the most part, I am your average citizen, the, the type of person that's going to go out and buy one of these e-bikes, your average Joe. So that is the kind of information I'm going to try to deliver to you, what it's like for an average user experience on this bike, it's things I notice. Um, I'll try to point out different things just to help to give you a, a feel of what it's like to ride the bike and own this bike. So just know that's the, uh, the point of view that I'm coming from, and I hope that you find it helpful. Now, if you've watched any of my review videos before, you'll know that I like to just go front to back, top to bottom on these bikes, go over all the components, give you a close up look at it, and just kind of point out things that I've noticed, uh, experienced, or, or things that I see that might be helpful. So let's jump into it. All right, well, there she is. What do you think of this blue? Man, it really pops. It is bright. If you like uh, adding a pop of color on your bikes, then you're going to like Cyrusher because they offer a couple different colors. You can get white, yellow, red, or blue on this bike and they're very bright and it's the rim color that changes when you pick the different color options the frames are always black all right another thing i want to point out is that in the box they actually give you a bicycle pump which i thought was a nice touch it's you know a very cheap plastic one but it's something that a lot of people that buy these bikes probably don't even think about when they order it and it arrives at the house and they have to pump up the tires after they're done setting it up and they're like oh my gosh i don't own a bike pump so a good touch from cyrusher and then also too they give you this a cable bike lock which i thought was nice because that's probably the second thing people realize is oh no uh how do i lock this thing up they didn't think of that so i thought that was a a great extra to put in the box kudos on that one but let's get started up here at the front you can see that you get 26 by 4 inch fat tires they are chow yang is the brand and they also state on the website that you, you could get kendas so it's probably just whatever's available at the time parts wise that they'll put on the on the bike those are pretty Pretty similar tires uh, with similar tread patterns. You can see it's somewhat aggressive. You could do a little bit of off-roading with this bike, no problem. They are a little bit knobby. Coming around to the other side, you'll see that there is a uh, quick release on the front wheel, which is becoming standard on these bikes. You've got disc brake here. It's a 160 millimeter disc, and the brakes have a bit of an upgrade. So they're kind of a hybrid. It's a cable pull, and then it's a hydraulic caliper. It's branded. X-Tech. I've found the brakes to be very adequate. No trouble bringing you to a stop. No trouble skidding the back tire when you need to. So no issues there. Climbing up the front fork here, you can see that you do have a front suspension with you know preload and lockout adjustments on the top. And uh, you've got full fenders on this bike that are attached to that fork here. And different than a lot of the other bikes, these full fenders are a glossy, shiny, with a silver pinstripe. So a little bit of pizzazz here from Cy Rusher. Normally you see just kind of plain flat black on these fenders. So if you like a little zip, you might like these fenders. And they're, they stay pretty far off the wheel, which I like. Most of the time, they're, those other ones, they really hug it tight and they, they rub a lot. So this one does not, it's nice and far from the wheel. Staying up here at the front, you can see we've got our LED headlight right here, nice and bright. And uh, very curious thing here. This, I don't know if you can see it in there, but this headlight has a horn 
built into it. And there's a button on the controls up here for horn. So I've never seen that before. Kind of a unique thing. Following the cables up here, you can see they use these nice cable ties to keep everything contained and together. I like that. It makes it look less messy. And coming over here to, you know, your brake levers, they're Zoom branded. They've got motor cutoffs, so it disengages the motor when you pull the brakes, which is great. Uh, I think most bikes do have that now, kind of a safety thing. And you can see your grips over here, you get a round grip as opposed to the ones with the, you know, the fatter area here with a palm rest. Um, I found these to be comfortable. They're rubber, they are extremely secure in place. They're not gonna spin around on you, which I like. Uh, this part does spin though, because this is your twist throttle right here. Some of you like thumb, some of you like twist. I like the twist ones, so I'm fine with this. And just below that, you see you've got your Shimano shifter here, your trigger shifter. So thumb's gonna take you down gears. And then up here on the front is your uh, index finger, which is gonna take you up gears. And this is one thing I wanna point out is that these, I, I was worried that these were gonna interfere with one another as you're trying to use the throttle and trying to shift at the same time. You know, were they gonna, is it gonna be cumbersome? And you might be saying, okay, well, why don't they just, why don't they put one of them on the other side? Well, you can't because over here, there's a lot going on. You've got your horn and your light button. You've got your menu and modes and everything button over here. And then right here, you've got another shifter, another Shimano trigger shifter. That's for your front derailleur because this bike is 21 speeds. Most of these bikes like this are either seven or nine speed. This is 21. So you've got shifters on both sides. So no matter where you put a throttle, it's gonna interfere with one of them, I guess. But here's what I can tell you from riding the bike. I actually didn't even notice it at all. It didn't bother me at all. I, I was really thinking it was going to. I was like, that's not gonna work. And I didn't have any problem manipulating throttle or shifting. I didn't even notice it. So I would say, don't worry about it. Maybe it'll bother you guys. It, it just didn't bother me at all, really. Now you can see this handlebar is, uh, it's very flat. There's not much of a curve here. I do like this better than the curved ones because you've got more space to mount things here. Like you can see, I've already mounted my cell phone holder. So it's, a, it's very flat. It's not any wider than the other handlebars on other bikes I've ridden, uh, similar to this, but it is very flat. And uh, it gives you this feeling of, I don't know how to describe it. It just makes the bike feel way more nimble. I found myself just weaving in and out and swerving and it just felt like I was in total control of the front end of this bike with the wide handlebars. I might actually switch some of my other bikes to handlebars like this because that's how much I liked them. So we'll skip over the display for the moment and go over here and take a look. So you've got your, of course, control button here that turns everything on and adjusts your pedal assist and all that. Uh, I do like that they give you a button for your headlight. I hate when you have to remember the combination of buttons to press to get your headlight on. So that's great. That's, you know, one touch headlight on. The other button here, of course, is horn. And I don't even know what to say here, how to describe this horn. Uh, what's the word? Uh, redonkulous? It is the loudest horn I have ever heard in my life. I, it's a horn I probably will never use because I do a lot of riding on the greenways and I prefer a nice ringing bell where you can kind of ding ding uh, you know on your left I'm, I'm coming through and it's, it's gentle because it's just people out strolling for a walk. This horn I'm going to punch it for you so you can hear how loud it is but I'll give you a second to turn your TV or your phone down because when I hit this it's going to scare the crap out of your dog. You ready? I mean, that sounds like you're about to get hit by a freight train. I can't imagine coming up behind someone on the greenway and hitting that. <laughs> they would jump out of their skin. So again, this is just a personal preference for me. That horn is way, way too loud. But, but if you're going to use this for like city riding, you know, that might be beneficial because people in a car can probably hear that. So I guess up to you if you like or dislike that horn. It's a cool little feature. I don't have any other bikes that have a horn like that but it's just, no, it's, it's crazy loud for sure. All right, one last thing on the handlebars, which is an awesome upgraded feature, and that is right here. It's adjustable, love that. The more adjustments you can put on a bike, I think the better, because then you're gonna be able to fit a wider variety of riders. You can see I've got it almost the whole way up right now, but that's fantastic that you've got, you know, the ability to just adjust the handlebars like that. You've got this cool little metallic blue in the headset, which really pops. Following the wires here, you can see they do go inside the frame for at least a little bit. There's a lot of exposed though. And I guess we can stop here for a second to talk about this frame, which is massive and not massive in 
weight, but massive in just overall size and width. I mean, this thing's almost as wide as your battery. It's huge, and they do that because your controller is inside here, inside this frame. And this is another thing that I wanna point out, and that is when I put this bike together and went out and rode it, there was a rattling noise coming from the front end here. And it took me a minute to figure it out, but it was the controller rattling around inside this frame tube. So I, uh, it's really easy to get to. So you take the battery off and then the battery cradle has two bolts that you unscrew and it slides to the side and there's a hole cut in the frame and the controller's right inside there. So I fished it out and I put just a couple pieces of foam in there and shoved the controller back in and it's perfect now, no rattle. So I made mention of this to Cyrusher and said, you know, there wasn't really anything securing the controller, it was rattling and they responded back and said, you know, that's a great idea. We'll start including, you know, uh, something to secure it or some foam inside there on all of our new bikes. So to me, you can't ask for anything better than that. They took that, you know, user feedback and experience and they're gonna implement it on bikes going out the door now. So fantastic. So having the controller inside that frame, I guess protects it from moisture and water and splash, which is nice. Of course, we got our battery right here. And of course it's a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery should give you plenty of distance i don't know the uh the mileage range listed on the website i can throw it up on the screen uh, you got your on off switch here your charging port there and on the other side there is a usb port so you can charge from that if you need to i do not believe that there was one on the display no i don't see one on the display so it is on the battery here over on this side right there and you have to key and unlock and lock the battery on the bike all right, next up we got this. This is amazing right here. This is one of my favorite parts of this bike actually. This seat, I mean, wow. I'm Okay, so I'm a big fan of cushy, pillow top, marshmallow, spring-loaded seats, and that's what you get here standard on this bike is this thing is so soft, so thick, and it's also nylon spring-loaded. That is probably the most comfortable bike seat that I've, that I've gotten out of the seven e-bikes that I've, seven or eight that I've ridden, uh, this by far, hands down, I would, I would buy this aftermarket to put on other bikes because it's just that soft. So I really like that. If you're a fan of squishy soft seats, then you're definitely gonna like this seat. As far as how high up and down the seat goes, I'll put the, the measurements on the screen for you. And I take mine from the ground to the top of the seat. So just know that, not from the bottom of the pedal stroke, but from the actual ground so you know just how high you gotta get on. Right here behind the seat, we've got our rear rack, metal rear rack. This comes standard on this bike. A lot of companies, you gotta buy them aftermarket. It's a standard issue. So you get the rack included. Also here you can see rear fenders here. A lot of coverage there all the way from, ooh, whole tire. Almost right back to here, yeah. And it's uh, again, the two-tone silver and black, pretty sharp looking. Of course, we've got our rear hub motor and you can see in there it's labeled 48 volt 1000 watt, this is a 1000 watt peak motor. I know some of you ask all the time, is it peak, is it nominal, is it uh, continuous? This is 1000 watt peak. So here we've got our rear derailleur. It's a Shimano 20, which I believe is on the, the lower level um, of Shimano shifters. However, it is so fast. I, I haven't quite figured that out about this bike yet, but when you push the button to shift, it jumps into the next gear instantaneously. It shifts so fast. I, I don't understand why, if it's somebody just dialed this thing in that perfectly or or what, but for being a, I think what is the lower end of Shimano, it shifts insanely fast, I love it. So maybe over time it'll uh, wear out faster than other models, I don't know, but right now it works pretty amazing. I'm very happy with the shifting. And if we follow our chain up here, you can see that you've got three gears here in the front instead of just one, so. 21 speeds on this bike. And last but certainly not least is your display. Let's take a look at this and if I can get in the light so you can see it, uh, we'll turn it on. And of course it gives you all the typical things you want on the display, the speed really big right there, your battery indicator, your pedal assist, odometer. Uh, what I can tell you is this bike is very easy to program. All you gotta do is hold up and down and it'll jump you into all the settings. There, P1, it goes like P1 through, I don't know, 15 or whatever and you can change a lot of things in here. So you can change the top speed limit. When I got the bike from Cyrusher, it was programmed to go no faster than like 18 miles an hour. Of course, I increased that to the 
maximum allowable. I bumped it up to like 100 or whatever the limit was. So I took off all limits on this thing. Uh, you can adjust your pedal assist levels. I like that. This also has that option. So you can have pedal assist one through three, one through five, or one through nine. I think that's a good feature to have. You can adjust the, the amps coming through the controller. Uh, it's a maximum of 20 amps. And of course I did that. I, I maxed out everything on this bike before I did any of the performance tests. You can of course adjust miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Uh, you can adjust the backlight setting. I've got it turned up to the brightest actually. It, it's a little bit dimmer than some of the other screens I've seen. Um, but it's very easy to program. Like I said, just hold up and down and it'll take you in. It's P1 and then the mode or M key just takes you through P1, P2, P3 and the up and down lets you select whatever you need to select. And before I forget, there's one other thing I want to point out, which is back here at the rear rack. This is just a reflector. It is not a tail light. You do not get a working tail light on this bike. Just that reflector, which I wish that was something it had. Uh, I think that just it's nice to have and it's a, a safety thing so people can see when you're braking. Uh, I would love if they could add that feature. Well, I think that pretty much covers the overall components of this bike. Uh, another thing I want to point out is it as it sits right now with the battery on it, this bike weighed in at 68 pounds, which, uh, you know, for these bikes, uh, that's probably on the lighter side. Now your next questions are probably, what is it like to ride this bike? What's the performance like? And of course I did, you know, my typical performance test. I did a, uh, how fast can you pedal it with the pedal assist test and uh, throttle only speed test and a zero to 20 and also a hill climb. And I've got those clips for you now, so you can take a look. All right, top speed pedaling. Just for frame of reference, my uh, Rad Power bikes usually hit around 25 miles an hour. And the Hemiway actually hit 33 as verified on the screen and the GPS. So very fast with that. I'm going to guess that this bike, given the feel of the power, I'm going to guess it's probably going to end up around 30-ish. zero to 20 acceleration on the Cy Rusher. Just again, for frame of reference, the rad bikes, typically 15 seconds. Hemiway was faster, like 10 seconds. I'm gonna put this closer to the Hemiway for sure. Let's see what she's got. Three, two, one, go. All right, top speed, throttle only. It goes flat and then slight downhill right here. Again, comparison, rad, typically around 25-ish miles an hour. I think the Hemiway went around 30. It was like 29 on the GPS and 31 on the screen. So I'm gonna guess again, Cy Rusher. I'm gonna put you probably right in that 30 mile an hour mark-ish. We'll see how it goes. Okay, let's see what she's got. Just throttle. Didn't get as high as I thought it would. I definitely had a very strong headwind though. So that could have could have played in for a mile an hour or so. I was taking a lot of a lot of wind there. And I wasn't in a full tuck, so it's probably around that 28-ish mark, I would say. Plenty fast. This bike is pretty easy to just. I mean, I'm in Pellet Sis 5 right now, it takes all that crazy. It's easy to cruise at 20 miles an hour on this bike. No problem. All right, pedaling hill climb, uh, just again for reference, the rad bike I have did this about 10 to 11 miles an hour pedaling. Uh, Hemiway cruised up about, I think it was about 15 miles an hour. I'm betting this is probably gonna be in that range. Side so rusher, let's see what you got. I'm gonna guess it 13-ish, uh, 13, 14 miles an hour. Uh, it feels very strong, so. And we're off. Kicked in, yeah, it's 
That's some strong power off the line. Oh man, yeah, we're already over 16 miles an hour. This thing's real strong on the hill. 16.3. Yeah, that's, that was actually even stronger than Hemiway. Even stronger than Hemiway. Might not have the same top speed, but man, that hill climb was really easy. <laughs> really easy, holy cow. Let's go try it with uh, just the throttle. All right, throttle only on the Rad, it, it struggled, man. It was like nine miles an hour and you could feel the motor working. Hemiway was I think 13, 14-ish throttle only. I'm guessing after that, I'm going to guess this is going to beat that. So let's see, Cy Rusher. Throttle only up the hill. And this is a decent hill, too. Fifteen. Slowing down a little bit. Thirteen, five. Yeah, 13, 15, somewhere in there. Felt stronger with the pedals than it did just the throttle. But that's typically how these bikes go. You always seem to get more power and more speed using the, the uh, pedal assist than you do just the throttle. But this bike definitely has the power to get you going. I mean, it takes off fast once it kicks in and you can hear it just, I'm already pedaled out. So I hope those clips gave you a little bit of a taste on what it's like to ride this bike and what the performance is like. I would say where this one really shined was probably the pedaling hill climb. It felt very, very strong in that pedaling hill climb. It's not the fastest that I've been on top end speed. Uh, you know, it, it kicks out pretty much at 28. That's as fast as this motor is going to help you. Everything above 28 is going to be all out of your legs. Uh, but it does feel very strong down low. I guess that's where that thousand watt uh, peak comes into play gives you nice down low power i think this would be a good bike if you live in a, a hilly area it's going to help you breeze up those no problem so that's the Cy rusher xf 650 what do you think uh, i hope you found the information useful or helpful or at least entertaining what i can tell you for me riding the bike around town is i, I think it had to do with the handlebars the flat handlebars i just it felt so nimble i was weaving in and out and up and down and over curbs and it was just it was just a fun bike to ride that's I guess the best way I can explain it, it was just, it was fun to be on and, uh, and I think they, they nailed it right here. You can, I'll show you. So this is their logo here, making sports easy and fun. And I'd say they nailed it on this one. It's, it's a fun bike to ride. There are, I guess, a couple negatives. The, the horn is just crazy loud. Uh, there's no tail light. Uh, maybe you don't like the styling of it if you're not a fan of the bright colors. Um, but other than that, there's a lot of benefits too. I mean, you get a thousand watt peak power, easy to program screen, uh, 21 speeds. It's lighter weight than some others. You get the cushy seat, you get your choice of color, you get the hydraulic caliper. So quite a few benefits on this bike. The bikes in this price point, they all honestly just have a different mix and match of components and parts. And they all have their strengths and their weaknesses. And it's up to you, I guess, to decide which mix and match of parts you like the best. So. You got to see here what comes on the Cy Rusher. You can check out their website for more info. It's right there, cyrusher.com. Thank you for checking out this video, and hopefully I'll be bringing you some more e-bike reviews in the future. Hit the subscribe button if you can, and thank you so much for watching.